Welcome to Morning Prayer on um, Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. We are on the Tuesday of the first week of Advent, and you will notice uh, to my left is our um, Advent wreath with our first candle that is lit. It is a uh, very meaningful time of year for all of us. I give thanks for Pastor Karen Lunwall's a wonderful children's sermon as well as a sermon. Very helpful in terms of reminding us of what Advent is and what the symbols mean. Um, because in the knowing it adds a depth to our practice, our a practice of prayer in which we engage in this morning. I return back to uh, a different format during the season of Advent. We will be resuming with our more familiar format of morning and evening prayer, but I thought during the season of Advent um, that I would be directing us towards uh, another morning and evening prayer resource uh, that I've shared with you previously. So the bulletin will be before you. Uh, you'll be listening to the readings, uh, but you will find moments in which you are asked to respond so that we can share in the morning prayer with one another. I welcome you again this morning as we begin morning prayer. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. God, come to our assistance. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray our antiphon. O Lord, in your light we see light itself. Our psalm, first psalm today, comes from Psalm 36. Sin speaks to the sinner in the depths of his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes. They flatter themselves in their mind that they know not their guilt. In their mouth are mischief and deceit. All wisdom is gone. They plot the defeat of goodness as they lie on their bed. They have set their foot on evil ways. They cling to what is evil. Your love, O Lord, reaches to heaven your truth to the skies, your justice is like God's mountain, your judgments like the deep. To both people and beast, you give protection. O oh Lord, how precious is your love. My God, the sons of men find refuge in the shelter of your wings. They feast on the riches of your house. They drink from the stream of your delight. In you is the source of life, and in your light we see light. Keep on loving those who know you, doing justice for upright hearts. Let the foot of the proud not crush me, nor the hand of the wicked cast me out. See how the evildoers fall, flung down, they shall never arise. Lord, you are the source of unfailing light. Give us true knowledge of your mercy so that we may renounce our pride and be filled with the riches of your house. Amen. Let us now pray Antiphon 2. Exult in God's presence with hymns of praise. A reading from Psalm 47. All peoples clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, we must fear, great King over all the earth. He subdues people under us and nations under our feet. Our inheritance, our glory is from him, given to Jacob out of love. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for God. Sing praise. Sing praise to our king. Sing praise. God is king of all the earth. Sing praise with all your skill. God is king over the nations. God reigns on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples are assembled with the people of Abraham's God. 
the rulers of the earth belongs to God, to God, who reigns over all. God, King of all peoples and all ages, it is your victory we celebrate as we sing with all skill at your, our command. Help us always to overcome evil by good, that we may rejoice in your triumph forever. Amen. A reading this day comes from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 15. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then he said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary men? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall be living on curds and honey by the time he learns to reject the bad and choose the good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now recite in unison the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our gospel this morning comes from this previous Sunday, in the first Sunday in Advent, but I believe it bears uh, repeating for us once again, as uh, from Wednesday on, we will be preparing for the second Sunday in Advent, yet we not move too quickly. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each which with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
For the meditation this morning, I wanted to, to share a reflection that goes way back uh, within this uh, daily office book that I have. Uh, in the very back, there are non-biblical readings uh, for each specific church season. And the non-biblical readings are written by early church uh, leaders. Um, the one that I am sharing with you this morning comes from Cyril of Jerusalem, who was Bishop of Jerusalem in and around the year 350. Uh, so that is quite some time ago. Some of the language is a little bit dated, uh, but that's understandable. But I do find uh, the season of Advent and the season of Lent in particular to be wonderful times to read things that I normally would not. To go back to the early church mothers and fathers and uh, read uh, their hopes, their desires, their needs. And it uh, connects us to something far deeper, as well as it reminds us that those things for which we experience in this day have been experienced in the past will be experienced in the present, and until the return of Jesus will be experienced in the future. So this is from uh, Cyril of Jerusalem, which is a catechetical instruction for those who would be preparing to be baptized. He writes, We do not preach only one coming of Christ, but a second as well, much more glorious than the first. The first coming will be marked by patience. The second will bring the crown of a divine kingdom. In general, what relates to our Lord Jesus Christ has two aspects. There is a birth from God before the ages and a birth from a virgin at the fullness of time. There is a hidden coming, like that of rain on fleece and a coming before all eyes still in the future. At the first coming, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. At his second coming, he will be clothed in light, as in a garment. In the first coming, he endured the cross, despising the shame. In the second coming, he will be in glory, escorted by an army of angels. We look then beyond the first coming and await the second. At the first coming, we said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. At the second, we shall say it again, we shall go out with the angels to meet the Lord and cry out in adoration, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Savior will not come to be judged again, but to judge those by whom he was judged. At his own judgment, he was silent. Then he will dress those who committed the outrages against him when they crucified him, and will remind them, You did these things. And I was silent. His first coming was to fulfill his plan of love, to teach people by gentle persuasion. This time, whether people like it or not, they will be subjects of his kingdom by necessity. Malachi the prophet speaks of the two comings, and the Lord whom you seek will come suddenly to his temple. That is one coming. Again, he says of another coming, Look, the Lord Almighty will come, and who will endure the day of his entry, or who will stand in his sight? Because he comes like a refiner's fire, a fuller's herb, and he will sit refining and cleansing. These two comings are also referred to by Paul in the writings to Titus. The grace of God the Savior has appeared to all men, instructing us to put aside in piety and worldly desires and live temperately, uprightly, and religiously in this present age, waiting for the joyful hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Notice how he speaks of the first coming for which he gives thanks, and a second, the one we still await. That is why the faith that we profess has been handed on to you in these words. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Our Lord Jesus Christ will therefore come from heaven. He will come at the end of the world in glory at the last day, for there will be an end to this world, and the created world will be made anew.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. For our prayers on this day, our response will be, Come, Lord, and save us. To the eternal word who became man to reveal to us the new and living way, let us make our humble prayer, Lord, in your mercy, come, Lord, and save us. God, in whom we live and move and have our being, come and teach us that you have made us your own. Lord, in your mercy, come, Lord, and save us. You are not far from each of us. Show yourself to all who search for you. Lord, in your mercy, come, Lord, and save us. Father of the poor and counselor of the afflicted, set the captives free today. Give joy to those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, come, Lord, and save us. You hate death and love life. Free all humankind from eternal death. Lord, in your mercy, come, Lord, and save us. We now take this moment to offer our intercessions before the Lord in prayer. We now share the prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Your light will come, O Jerusalem. The Lord will dawn on you in radiant beauty. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord our God, grant that we may be ready to receive Christ when he comes in glory and to share in the banquet of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the season of Advent, may the hope of God fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.